Hey guys, this is the EC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is a Mitsubishi Mini Split Heat Pump. All right. This model number is a MXZ-4C36NA. All right. So uh, this unit has four indoor um, air handling units. Okay, the indoor wall units. Um, it's a uh, inverter style. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to actually start and check this. I just got done installing this, all right? And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be adding refrigerant, all right? So this is how to start and check a uh, Mitsubishi heat pump. Right here, it says if, if the liquid line exceeds 98.4 feet, so that means total, okay? If, you, if the total of all four liquid lines exceeds 98.4 feet, then you need to add... 1.08 ounces for every five additional liquid line feet. All right. So I actually have uh, I used 250 foot total worth of worth of lines. Okay, for the liquid line. And what I did is I just measured how much I cut off. All right. I fished these these lines up through the inside walls. All right, and uh, poked into the back behind of the uh, the air handlers. All right, or the the wall units. Okay, so out of the 250 feet that I used, all right, I cut off about four. Well, I cut off 47 feet. All right, so that leaves me with 203 feet. Okay, 203 feet total. If I then minus off the 98.4 feet, I end up with. 104.6 feet. Okay, you divide the 104.6 feet divided by five, and then it leaves you with 20.92. So I'm actually going to be weighing in 21 ounces of refrigerant. All right. Now I can either uh, vacuum pump this and break the 500 micron vacuum with the uh, 21 ounces of refrigerant. All right. But in this case, um, I'm going to actually start the unit up and add it into the vapor line. While it's in cooling mode, this is going to be the low pressure side, all right? If it's in heat pump mode, this is gonna be your, your, your low side. It's, it's the closest point to the, uh, right into the side of the compressor. And that's why there's this little tag here, but we can enter it right into here. And there's also another uh, fail safe right behind here. It's a uh, accumulator, all right? So even though we're using a liquid vaporizer, all right, it's right there, with, all right? Even though we're using that, um, the, you know, there's another additional fail safe as well. Okay, we have our 410A bottle down there. All right, and I'm gonna get the air out of the lines and I'm gonna turn the unit on. All right, and then I'm gonna weigh in my required refrigerant. So here we go. So make sure all of your lines are tight before you connect you want to do that pretty quickly so you don't lose any refrigerant because there's a Schrader valve right here so all right right there it's reading 200 and say 20 222 psig you follow that in and that's at about 77 degrees the reason it says 77 degrees is the majority of the copper line set right here the majority of that is in the crawl space and up inside the walls. And you just have this small amount out here. It's presently 90 degrees outside, okay? So it's going to take the average of all the refrigerant uh, temperature, and it's going to exert that much pressure, all right? So we're going to go ahead and turn the system on. All right, the unit's on right now. And all four zones are calling, all right? So we've got cold vapor line on each one of these, okay? And now we're going to go ahead and charge the unit. All right. All the units are calling. All right. All of the indoor units. And now we're going to go ahead and weigh in our refrigerant. We've already let the air out of the lines. And we need to weigh in uh, 21 ounces of refrigerant. So we'll do a little bit at a time here. And once again, you could just break the vacuum with your refrigerant that you need to add in, okay? And then you just gotta turn the unit on and then you should be good to go. 
So in reference to start and checking this, you don't use subcooling or superheat. You can only charge by weight. All right, so you got to know what the length is on your lines. All right, so just say you have a flare that's leaking or something like that in an existing project. You actually need to um, fix the leak. And since you don't know how much refrigerant's in the system, you actually have to actually recover the refrigerant out of it and then weigh it all back in again. You know, recover it out, vacuum pump it down, hold, hold your micron level, and then uh, weigh all your refrigerant back in. All right, so uh, because this is an inverter style unit, you're never really measuring the full subcooling value, all right, or the superheat value. So you really got to go by weight on these things. We got nine ounces in so far. We're almost almost halfway there. Once again, we're we're actually weighing the refrigerant directly into the accumulator, and the accumulator's job is to only allow vapor uh, refrigerant into the compressor for safety. All right, so that's an extra safety besides our quick charge cylinder, we're actually putting the refrigerant right into the accumulator. So we're getting it. A couple side notes. Um, you want to get a good flaring tool to do this uh, or get the line sets that actually have flares on them already, but you're, at least you're probably going to have to cut one side of that. So you're going to have to put at least a flare in. Uh, you want to get that flare as big as possible. It's not like a like a natural gas or propane line, OK? These, these flares have to hold in a lot of pressure all right, compared to a gas line or something like that. Uh, natural gas is only a quarter of a PSI, normally 5 to 7 inch water column. It's 27.6 water column uh, for one PSI, OK? So if nat, nat gas runs at 5 to 7 and, and uh, propane is 11 to 13 typically, so even propane is only a half a PSI. Here on the vapor, on the low side, we're reading 175 PSI. Gee, all right, so it's a world of difference. you got to get the POE refrigerant oil on the flares when you're doing them, all right? So we're at 16 ounces right now. And you got to make sure that you seal the flare up with refrigerant oil. And then you just, you know, you tighten it down to the specifications in the manual. Another thing, um, just be aware of the correct uh, wire to use for this, for the communication wire. Either use uh, it's typically 15 amps. You know you're going to run 15 amp wire, so that would be uh, 14 gauge. So you need 14 gauge, three coated wires, and a coated ground for these things. All right. All right. That's it. It looks like one pound five ounces. So that's 16 ounces plus five is 21 ounces. All right. That's that. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.